welcome to Seen Through Glass and welcome to the Renault Twizy. Now, long-term viewers may know that fellow YouTuber Seb Delaney owns a Renault Twizy down in Monaco and every time I go to visit him, I cannot help but fly around in the little thing. I just think it is so much fun. Now, that may be because I'm in Monaco and this is very much a fair weather vehicle. It's essentially a go-kart. A go-kart with a roof, an, an electric go-kart, an electric two-seater go-kart with a roof. That's basically what the Twizy is all about. And I think it's probably most suited to cities that have lots of yachts in them. You know, places where convertible Rolls Royces seem the norm. Monaco, Marbella, Puerto Banus. I can't really think of any other places. I'm not that knowledgeable on places with yachts, but you kind of get the feeling. So. I've always wondered, what would a Twizy be like in London? Did I only enjoy it so much because it was boiling hot weather? Let's not forget, the standard Twizy comes with no doors, no windows, no heating, no radio. It's, it's just a toy. So, how would it handle the mean, aggro, full-on streets of London? Well, thanks to Renault UK, I'm about to find out because they have just lent me this orange, very orange Twizy for a month and a half. And not just any month and a half, November and December, the cold months. It's actually quite warm today, as you can see, I'm only wearing a jumper, but on average, it's usually cold and wet. So yes, I'm gonna be finally finding out whether you can actually live with the Twizy in any country in the world, in any city in the world, and specifically London. Now I didn't just ask Renault for the keys to a Twizy to see if it could withstand the winter months in London. Well, actually it's not winter, is it autumn? Autumn and beginning of winter months in London. There is another reason. Like so many cities around the world, London has a central congestion zone in an aim to reduce sort of traffic and pollution. Uh, you get charged for going into the center of town. Now usually that's around 11 pounds a day, I think, for quite a big, area and I actually live just outside that area so anytime I want to go to central London for meetings or filming I get charged at 11 pounds however earlier this year they introduced a sort of older car additional charge now both of my cars Ivan the Volvo and the 360 fall into that older car bracket that means anytime I want to drive into town for a meeting or filming I get charged 26 pounds 26 pounds that's not parking that's not fuel that's to cross an imaginary line 20 i mean i know lots of you will be saying well sam come on you could just take public transport that caps off at like six pounds a day and now you're right but that doesn't help me when i want to film and also sometimes i just need to get across london somewhere i need to get across that congestion zone and to go around it will add like 45 minutes to an hour onto my journey so I needed to avoid this daily charge because I was racking up the bills with all the meetings I've been having because of Drive the World. Now, some vehicles are exempt from the congestion charge zone. The majority of them are electric. So now you're probably starting to understand why I was so keen to get my hands on a Twizy. This thing is saving me so much money. Anyway, let's crack on and tell you what it is like to actually drive one of these things. You run Now I did actually do a review video of Seb's Twizy back in the day, but that was a very long time ago now. And I have to say, one thing I'd forgotten about this little car is how hard the ride is. Oh my lord! There was such little travel in the suspension that I feel like I'm being attacked by sumo wrestlers every time I go over a bump. Once you get past that, it's incredibly easy to drive. The steering is quite heavy, but it's essentially a golf buggy. There are no gears or anything like that. It's a go pedal and a stop pedal. You do have to be careful though, because this thing is silent, it is deadly. And if you're going anywhere at sort of normal car speeds, so in London, 20 or 30 miles an hour, people really don't see or hear you coming. So I'm on my horn a lot, and the horn is so loud. 
because there's no engine noise and you're sat on top of where the horn is let me just oh it scares me when i use the horn now another issue i have is because of my height whilst i do have good visibility in here this car's got the optional doors and windows but they're good they actually keep a little bit of warmth in and they don't block my view but these a pillars really do oh no i've gone the wrong way look at this turning circle test <laughs> that is literally on its own axis and now i'm going into the sun so if i sit up straight this becomes a sun shield sun visor sun shield sun visor but yeah these a pillars especially when you're going around corners block essentially my entire view because i'm looking up here if i was a lot lower down then maybe i could see a bit better but visibility not great so we've covered hard ride bad seating sucks for tall person easy to drive what we haven't touched upon is the fact it's incredibly fun <laughs> i love driving this thing it is as fun as it is to drive in monaco in london because you don't feel like you should be on a public road it's just hilarious and if you really stamp on the pedal it does go quick it really does go quick the initial launch isn't necessarily there but you pick up speed and momentum before you know it and away from the lights and pooling around town it's just brilliant it makes me feel about seven years old anyway uh, i'm going to pull over somewhere i'm stuck at a very annoying traffic light at the moment uh, and show you the quite difficult procedures of getting in this vehicle starting it up and what storage capacities or opportunities you have in the tiny twizzy convenient uh, parking situation here but I did want to show you that look in London you can park the Twizzy sort of square on square on in a parking bay so that is wicked especially when you get into central London where parking is difficult um, but anyway look these are the removable or optional doors and windows um, so you can well I know you can take the windows off actually if you spec the doors I don't know if you can remove the doors once they're on but anyway to get in there are no door handles uh, instead you have to be a little bit uh, uh, like a gymnast I suppose you've got to pull open the window don't be scared put your hand inside and there is the door handle down there did you see that so then you get the scissor door treatment i mean what other vehicle in the world at this price point with an electric powertrain does that i mean you could say the i8 but it's what eighty thousand pounds sixty thousand pounds this is a tenth of that price um so yeah i'll just show you again there is the door handle there so if you don't have the windows um there's no no window to mess around with um it's probably a little bit easier and you can obviously have the windows wound down i say wound down they're zippered down um now in terms of storage uh this is the two seat configuration excuse my water bottle uh, i've been getting a bit thirsty these days um so you could put things onto that seat but you're very lacking in security there so there is a tiny cubby hole back here so if you unscrew that and remove the cushion as you can see i currently have a blanket and a hat back there um, this is for my girlfriend. I, I do like a pink blanket. It's not mine. Um, that's about as much as you can fit. It's another good demonstration of size. You don't get much else in there. Um, that is really uh, a bit of a bore to access. Oh, I'll just fly on the key around. Um, really, all you get, because you do also uh, have a tiny glove box, which is really not that big. I mean, I got a pair of gloves and a GoPro mount. You could probably fit maybe a... Well, let's see if that bottle of water fits, actually. I don't think it will. Oh, it might just. Yeah, you can get a bottle of water in there. So, storage is a problem because, as I'll show you now, here are my things for the day. Camera bag. And jacket. I've now lost my second seat. And if I want to go anywhere, that is very visible. And as I've just shown you, all you have to do is yank that or even rip that or cut that and you've got access immediately to the back so security and storage not fantastic but the fact you can park like this is amazing and how cool does this thing look i'm just going to open both both of these scissor doors because you just need to get the whole effect i just can't it is a toy this is the best toy ever and you've got to be a bit of a, a child adult to really appreciate it but ladies and gentlemen i mean i'm now going to take a picture of a speciale through the twizzy i mean that is winning instagram gold ladies and gentlemen
beastly G wagon there has kind of just owned me a little bit. But hey, he's polluting and he's going to have to pay if he wants to go in the congestion zone. Um, now, I've been really pleasantly surprised by the range I've been getting from the battery because in Monaco, with all the hills, Seb's Twizzy used to run out of batteries so quickly because you're always going up and down hills. Because London's relatively flat, you can really eke out the battery life. I've become the master of economic battery use. You get a sort of three bar indicator here, which is kind of like a, almost like a rev count of how much battery you're using at any one point. I'm only ever at bar one because I just like to eke out the battery life. It means I am quite slow. And when I know I've got enough battery to get home, then I floor it up to the full discharge, um, which is quite exciting. But usually I'm just pooling around like this. And I'm probably getting 25 or 30 miles of central London mileage, which I have to say, I think is pretty good. And it takes probably about three, maybe four hours to charge from pretty empty back up to full. And I have got into the habit now of just plugging it in whenever I go home. But as you can see today, I've been around and about filming quite a lot. I've traveled across most of London because I live in the southeast and we're now in the southwest and I haven't even got close to half a battery yet. So that I have been impressed by. So to try and answer my own question of can you live with a Twizy in central London? Yes, of course you can, as long as you realise what it is, which is essentially a toy, a very useful toy, and for uh, city living, fantastic good fun, but slightly impractical and a little bit painful. <laughs> Would I go out and buy one? Yes, potentially, because even in these colder months, which turn out aren't that cold, it's still relatively warm with the doors and the windows. You just wrap up warm and you're good to go. It's easy to park, easy to use. It's the lack of storage that I don't like. And what else? I'm not really sure what else. You can't really take it on a sort of big motorway. I couldn't take it out of town. So it's really an in-town toy. But at, I think it's under 10 grand. What are your other options? Because i3s, i8s, Priuses and stuff like that are so much more. And they're a different proposition entirely. So I'm still a massive fan of this thing. It is turning out to be brilliant to use in and around town. And when I get back from Drive the World, and if I'm still in central London, I think I might consider having one of these as just a run around. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. There's lots more to come with this Twizy. Let me know if there's anything you want to see in particular with it. I want to try and do a povlog. I tried to film one a few days ago, but no cars were out and it was all a bit of a disaster. So yeah, let me know if you want me to go and pick up anyone, Lenny the Geezer, or try another povlog. There's still some funny adventures to come with this thing, I think. But give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's video and make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come.